Hey there, welcome to the 13th Easy JavaScript tutorial part of EasyProgramming.net. Today I'm going to introduce JavaScript arrays. In general, an array is a special variable used to store data, a list of data, and you can access each list item by using an, their numbered index. Uh, this is a visual representation of what an array looks like. Uh, in a few minutes, I'll demonstrate how to declare arrays and how to extract values from arrays in JavaScript. This is just to give you a brief understanding, an overview of what you're looking at when you're coding. Uh, so here I have an array called name uh, with an open and close square bracket. This is the representation. This is telling um, everyone that this is an array. And inside this array, I have values of these five names: Nas, Pearl, Bob, Sandy, and Patrick. And they have a numbered index of zero through four. Uh, the one thing you need to know is that everything in JavaScript is zero indexed. So if I want to access the first name in my array I would have to do name and in square brackets put in zero to get NAS. If I want to get the fourth item it will be three Sandy and the last item four Patrick. So this is zero index. That's the only thing to keep in mind. Uh, this is just a one dimensional array. You can go deeper. You can assign arrays to each of these values by treating them as variables and go as deep as you need to. Uh, but that's not something that I'll cover in this tutorial. Uh, there are they're much better suited for uh, when we're talking about JavaScript objects and JSON and that will come later on. So let's get to it and start coding in JS Fiddle. Okay, so we're here in JS Fiddle and we're going to start writing some code. Uh, so JavaScript arrays are special global objects used to create arrays. And I just gave you a brief uh, overview of what an array is, what an array looks like to the back to the back end. So arrays are special variables used to store a list of data delimited by commas, and this is an important note, all arrays are zero indexed and they are numbered indexed. Uh, if you've worked with other programming languages such as PHP, you know that arrays can be um, associative arrays, uh, meaning they can be named indexes. In JavaScript, although you can uh, use named index in an array, but you can only do it once, it it starts acting really funky, so in JavaScript it's recommended that you use named indexes for objects and not arrays and objects is something that I will cover in a future tutorial we will go in depth into what objects are, how you can create your own objects a very integral part of JavaScript. So there are two ways you can declare uh, an array in JavaScript. I'm going to show you both methods. Method one is preferable so I'll do that for now. To declare a simple array let's just do var string uh, equals to this. So right now I'm telling JavaScript that this variable str short for string is an is an array object uh, by using the open and closed square brackets. To any programming language, to any programmer, when anyone sees this syntax, they know that this variable is an array object. No matter what. Right now, the array object doesn't have anything. Uh, I'm pretty much just declaring this array as a variable. This is telling JavaScript that this is something new. You should expect data later on. But right now, I can't extract anything because there's nothing in here. So let's say I want to actually create an actual variable and start inputting data. What would that look like? So let's say I want to have an array called cars and I'll start giving it values. Everything here is comma uh, separated. So we do Honda, just some car manufacturer names. Uh, let's do, uh, I've seen those around a lot. Use a uh, Subaru. <laughs> Subaru. So here I have a list of six different cars, uh, and let's say uh, we want to see what this array looks like. So we can do a simple console log of the console log cars, and if I run it, there's nothing happening on the in the HTML. So if I go into my inspect element, go into my console, zoom in a little bit, get rid of that, and run it again. And this is my cars uh, array. Everything is separated by commas and these are different values within the array. Um, index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So there's 6 but 0 indexed. That's one way to do it. Uh, I, in the next tutorial I'll go over array properties and methods uh, that you can use on array objects like I did for strings and numbers but right now I'm going to show you a little quick one that you've already used in string which is called length so you can see how many values an array has we can see just by counting that this array has a six values because it's easy but what if you're working with an array that has you know a thousand values do you want to sit there and start counting them one by one nope so there you can use the dot length uh, property 
in arrays to see how long they are. So if I run it, I get six. Easy, right? So if I enter another one here, uh, let's call it Mercedes. If I run it, and now the length turns to seven. And um, this is a great way to um, a great property to use if you want to ever uh, iterate through each of these um, each of these array var each of these array values. Um, that's something we'll also cover in the next tutorial when we're going over methods. Let's output um, the value of the cars into my HTML. Uh, up here, I have a couple diffs set up. So I have a more my array one. So let's just do a get element by ID ML equals two. This is going to output cars on the screen, so we can see it on the screen rather than just uh, in our console. So I have this. So these are different values separated by commas. There's no spaces in between. Okay, that's one. So that's method one of just um, declaring a variable and in square brackets inputting your uh, data uh, separated by commas. Actually, before I look at method two, let's actually look at extracting just one value. Um, in the presentation earlier, I showed you how you can access each value, but let's just do it here right away. Uh, so let's do console log. Let's say I want to get cars, I want to get the third value of my array. Now since it's zero index, the third value is actually going to be the index of two. So now if I run it, go to the console log, clear that up, console and it's Acura. So this is the third array but it's indexed two. So that makes sense, right? So I can do the same thing here in my HTML. So if I do cars, uh, let's do three, so I'm going after the fourth uh, value. If I press run, it'll only give me Lexus. So pretty easy, right? You just think about it for a second. Well, and now let's cover method two. Put in some common here. Create an array using new. So this is not something that we've covered before. Let's just do it right now. So we'll do var num equals to new array five and two. Let's just enter those values. So now we're telling JavaScript that we're creating a new array object. Uh, whenever the word new comes into play, where it's, it's pretty much telling JavaScript that we're creating a new something, a new object. And later on I'll show you how you can create your own um, custom objects, which you can use, and they're, they're pretty cool. So now I'm telling Array that I am inputting two values, 5 and 2. Uh, let's enter um, a few more, right, 9, 10, 15, 33, 24, 63, 123, 623, 213, that's all. Okay. So now I have an array of all these values. This is exactly the same as if I were to do var num equals to, actually let me put this on another line just so it's clearer, var num equals to, I'm just going to copy this so you don't have to see me type over and over again. There you go. So this is exactly the same as this, and this is actually preferred, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Since they're both the same, let's extract some values. So instead of logging to the console, let's just do it uh, right into the HTML. So we'd have get element by ID. I have my array2 uh, diff set up. Just to num. Do that. There you go. Everything is valued. So if I want to do how how many values I have here, I didn't actually count how many I have. Excuse my typos. Um, if I press one, there are 12 values. So I know everything's indexed from zero all the way to 11. See so if I want to access the seventh item or the eighth item, um, index of seven, it's 24. So one, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8. So this is the 8th item, index of 7. This is pretty straightforward, right? So just I'll put num again just to tell you, show you. And now I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell you why this is not preferred um, as opposed to this. So let's say I want to input not all of these values, just the 5. If I were to do it in square brackets, if I were to do it in square brackets, it would just put that 5 in index of 0. But what this does is, if this is telling JavaScript that I want to create an array with 5 different 
blank values, and this is the this is the length of the array, right? So if I press run, so if I do now length, you would expect this to be. You can see the commas here already. You, could, you, you, you would expect this to say one because there's just one value, but nope, it's actually five because the, if you input just one number value in here, it'll take that as the length of the value, length of the array. So if I put an eleven, and now it's eleven. But what if I do enter a five and then a, and an eleven? If I press run, now there's two because now there's two values. We can see that. So this is something that uh, that isn't really recommended when you're working with arrays. You're better off using the square brackets. But this is good to know. Uh, if you ever need to use it, if you're ever having issues with, you know, what the hell is happening with my code, I only have one number in there, but it's saying that my length is, you know, 17 rather than just, you know, one. Uh, now you know. So if I do five and then I just output num, you saw the commas. So there are five, um, the length of five, so there's four commas, so there's five blank values in here. Does that make sense? If you have any questions, please ask below. I know it can get confusing. Um, well, anyway, that's all there is for arrays for now. This is just an introduction to arrays. Stay tuned for the next tutorial where I'll be going over some more array properties and methods, and we'll see how far we can get there. If you have any questions on arrays on anything I've shown so far, please ask in the comments below. Remember to visit my website at easyprogramming.net. I would also recommend that you go to the W3Schools and read up on a race. It's a really great read if you want to understand how these work. And thank you for watching.